Hey guys, this is the second segment of the mineral chapter and uh, I stopped just before because I messed up a little bit. I left the slide out and I wanted to go through that. Remember, these are the extra elements you have to memorize right here, these ones. Um, and uh, after this slide, this is the next one. And this is talking about that we have minerals like a couple of them, and you could know which only contain one element, and that is like copper. Remember this, that's, that's uh, Cu. Then you got the diamond, that's carbon, and you have the graphite, which is also carbon. And then you have uh, gold, the silver. These are all only one element. However, most of the minerals we're going to learn and all the others we don't, we won't learn has a whole lot of elements and they are actually combined together to form compounds. So that's why now we're going to go into uh, how the compounds and everything is forming. And I, I went through this slide already. So we're going to uh, talk about the atoms and their properties, the bonding formation of ions, ionic bond, covalent and metallic bond. So let's jump. Here's the atoms first. It has two main parts. One is the nucleus right here. And the nucleus it has two main particles. One is the proton. The proton is the unit of the atomic mass. That's an important information about the proton. The other one is that actually it has a positive charge, positive chemical charge. The other particle is the neutron. The neutron has about the same weight as the proton, but it does not have any kind of charge. It's neutral. So those are the two things. Uh, the next thing you will have to know is the electrons. And the electrons are outside of the nucleus. They will actually orbit the nucleus on energy levels or energy shells, we call them. And so the electrons are going to be right here and they are orbiting the nucleus. The size of the electron is 1 over 1850, so it's itty bitty teeny tiny. When you're talking about the mass, the weight of the atom, basically the electron's weights are negligible. It's very, very low. Um, but however, it, there is one important thing about that, that they have one negative charge, uh, chemical charge is equal with the positive charge of the, of the proton. So basically, when you have the same number of protons and, and electrons in an element, it is actually neutral from outside. So something has to happen to actually for the, for the atoms to become uh, charged chemically. So, uh, I think I finished this slide. So let's go to the next one. It's talking about the electrons and the electron shells. If the nucleus is right here, on the very first electron shell, the maximum number of electrons is going to be two. Two. On this, and you know that is the the electron configuration which. Everybody learns in chemistry, but if you haven't had chemistry and you don't really care for it, don't worry. I hope you understand this, and this is all you have to know. You don't have to go further. So on the very first electron shell from the nucleus, we have two electrons. On the very second one, we have eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, in the third and all the others, you can have more than eight, actually. However, the outermost electron shell, which is the farthest away from the nucleus, the maximum number of electrons is going to be eight. Remember, it's eight. But almost none of the elements has eight electrons out there. Uh, that is what we call the outermost electron shell. We also call it a uh, valence electron shell. Now the valence electron shell, uh, as I said, the, the, the most stable state of an atom if they have eight electrons out there. However, naturally, they don't. So that is the reason that we have compound is because the elements will actually uh, combine with each other so they can have eight electrons on the valence electron shell. And 
they they die for doing that basically it's it's very very strong they they got to do it there is just no way that they can stay without having eight electrons out there so they will do everything to reach that point and we call this the octet rule the octet rule is that elements do not have most of them don't have eight elements on the outermost electron shell but they that they, they need to have eight to reach the lowermost energy level so they'll do everything to get there okay before we jump into the bonding let's talk about a couple of other things you got to know one is the atomic number and the atomic number if you look at the periodic table each element has a square and it will have the symbol of the element and right above the symbol you got the atomic number and then down here is the atomic weight the atomic number is actually the the number of proton the atomic number is equal with the number of proton in that atom so the atomic number is equal with the number of protons in the atom which means every element which has one proton is called hydrogen and every element which has six protons is called uh, carbon and every element with eight is called oxygen now the other thing you have to know is the mass number the mass number is also important to know that is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons together so that's the mass number and this takes us to the to the isotopes in just one second but before that we have to say the number of electrons because normally the atoms are neutral so therefore that defines the fact that the number of protons plus the number of electrons is equal so the number of protons are equal with the number of electrons originally so in an atom when an atom is neutral the number of protons is the same as the number of electrons so if you think about the the atomic number not only gives you the number of protons but also gives you the number of electrons in a neutral atom so it's very important now we are at the isotopes and the isotopes are city less like cases when when in an atom you have the same number of protons among atoms but they can have different number of neutrons so if you have like oxygen here is the number of protons number of neutrons no I will do carbon so this is number of protons protons just put PR proton number of neutrons Ni is neutron and the mass number and we'll do carbon okay so carbon so the number of protons is always six right here but what if the number of neutrons are also six what is going to be the mass number right 12 so this is what we call the isotope carbon 12 when when i say carbon 12 then you know i'm talking about the isotope that 12 gives you the fact that this is the uh, carbon atom which has six proton and six neutron so therefore the mass number is 12 so you know the specific carbon atom you are talking carbon isotopes you're talking about here if the neutrons are 7 then the mass number is going to be 13 so this is carbon 13 and here if I say it's carbon 14 then you can calculate that the number of uh, neutrons are 8 so the mass number is 14 now the carbon 12 and 13 are are stable isotope that means that they will not change through time so if it was formed carbon 13 it's going to stay carbon 13 forever however 
Carbon-14, as you know, is an unstable or radioactive isotope. That means that through time they actually decay into another element and they release a lot of energy. So that's the radioactive isotope. We don't have to know much, much more for this class about this. We're going to learn more in historical geology. So this just shows you the, the hydrogen, uh, the, the first hydrogen isotope, where you have actually one proton and no neutron. So the mass number is one. And the other one is when you have one proton and one neutron, that is what we call that deuterium. Deuterium, and uh, oops, I did that. And in that case, you have one proton and one neutron. This is the heavy water, deuterium. So if you have heavy water, that just means that it has one proton, one neutron. So the mass number is two. Oh, I am so so sorry. It's just like 11 or 4. I'm so tired. But I had to watch tennis. I have already told you that. So that's, sorry, that's the reason I'm, <coughs> I'm yawning. <coughs> this other one shows you the carbon 12 and the carbon 14. Remember, I already kind of showed it to you. The carbon 14 is the radioactive, the radioactive one. Anyway, that's cool. So let's go to the next slide. And this is where we start talking about the bonding. The elements electrically will uh, combine with each other to fulfill the, the wish that on the outermost electron shell they want to have eight electrons. And that's what they are doing, diff different ways. There are a couple of ways they can do it. Uh, and this is what we're going to talk about. Most of the time, not most of the time, just about all the time, when chemical bonding happens, the, the electrons on the outermost electron shell is what we call valence shell. Are gonna be uh, the ones who are, so the, the element on the outermost shell or the valence shell will be involved in the chemical reactions. Therefore, the electrons we call on these shells valence electrons, okay? Uh, so I already told you that the outermost uh, electron shell will maximum hold eight electrons, but most of the guys do not have that many. The only ones who have eight electrons out there or are the, the last row in the periodic table Oops, it should go like this, like this, because that's where hydrogen is. So this is the last row, last column, I should say, last column, because it's going, rows are going like this, and the column is going up to down. So this is the noble gas. And those guys already have eight electrons, which means that they do not like to be involved in any kind of chemical reaction. I used to say that this is the loners of the of the periodic thing. You know that humans have this, like there are some people, probably you know some, who do not have girlfriend or boyfriend. They are just always alone. They are happy like that. This is the noble gases of humans. Uh, they already have eight electrons, so they don't want to do anything. And that's how the noble gases are. So remember the noble gases in the eighth column they already have eight valence electrons, so they do not want to do any kind of chemical bonding. And remember that every element, every other element other than the noble gases, everybody else wants to react with each other so they can have eight electrons and they could reach their lowermost energy level, which is, remember, the octet law. So here we are. If you think about the, the valence electrons, you have to kind of see how many electrons are on that element and you have to see what did I do with the extra ones or how did I gain some more. So these red numbers here, like the first column right here, this one, they will have one, one electron on the outermost sh electron shell. These guys will have two. Now these guys can change their electron numbers, but these will have three, 
these guys have four, these guys have five, six, seven, and eight. I told you already that the noble gases have already eight, so they are happy as they are. You won't find them ever to try to reach out for other electrons or, or get rid of some. They will never do that. So here we are. We're going to get to the ions. Uh, as I told you, the atoms in their natural state have the same number of protons and electrons. Uh, so if anything happens, as I said, they have to reach the lowermost energy level. They want to have eight electrons. And uh, one of the way they can actually reach that state is if they lose or gain element electrons. So they lose or gain electrons. This is like what I call keyword for ionic bond. So it's important that the, the way they, they reach the stable, the lowermost energy, is by losing or gaining electrons. I guess I'm finishing here and we'll continue in the third segment. Bye for now.